but let folks, we're just letting folks know that this meeting is being recorded. Um, and I will call it to order at 2.05 p.m. This is the May 15th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly with the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, I'm gonna just do a quick sound check, um, say hello to everyone and make sure everyone can hear and be heard. And I'll start with you, Yvonne. Yes, I can hear everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes, coming through, good, thank you. Um, Dr. Rhodes. I can hear everyone and I can see everyone, at least those people who are present. Great. And Ms. Bridges. I can hear you, but I can only see who talks. I still can't get this <laughs> fixed right, but I'm right here. Okay, good. Because you're on your iPad. Is that the, yeah. Those... Yeah, I just can't get a picture of everybody, just me and the person who's talking. So I guess that's good. All right. <laughs> Um, and Pamela, I see your hand is up. Yes, please. Yeah, so I did see Dr. Shabazz was in the attendees, but um, he did you move him over? I didn't, no. Okay, so he may be trying to get in. Um, okay, I'm going to keep my eye on that. I'll keep my eye on that, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to turn my, um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to turn my camera off, but I'll hang on for a few minutes in, in case there's any technical issues. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Pamela. Great to see you. All right. So we um, we have a pretty um, decent agenda today. Um, so I do want to just check in and do a, a time check for folks to know what hard stops folks might have. Um, Dr. Rhodes, what time do you need to leave today? Well, um uh, yeah right right now <laughs> no i'm sure no. uh 3 30. okay thank you and yvonne three okay and um miss bridges what time do you need to leave today i i really need to leave at three at three. Okay. So we're going to be really efficient as, as efficient as we possibly can be. I'm going to start off by uh, announcing free listening sessions that we have upcoming. Um, these are not listening sessions that are public facing. They're listening sessions with groups in the community. And I see Hala is um, joining us now. So that's excellent. Hi, Hala. Can you hear us? I'm such a little dancing person. I see, I, I hear you. Right. Um, okay, we'll give Hala a second to get. Um, we're we're going to figure it. We're going to just keep on doing it, right? Let's see. Yes. We'll just mute Hala for now so that. Um, so we have three listening sessions that are coming up. Um, the first is tomorrow. It's with the POCU students um, and it's, uh, and that is People of Color United at the Amherst Regional High School. Um, that's at 345. And I'd like to just get a quick count from who's here um, to know who will be able to attend that session. I know Ms. Bridges is definitely, you're attending that one, right, Ms. Bridges? I'm, yes, I, I'm definitely going to do, I forgot that I had a doctor's appointment at 315. I'm going to see if they can move it. Okay. And if they can't, um, they're going to have to move it because I would really like to come. Okay, thank you. That's excellent. Okay, Dr. Rhodes, I know you said you would be at that one. Is that still true? Uh, no, it's not true. Uh, there's there's a 530 emergency meeting and I, I'm just going to be, um, I don't have the bandwidth. I wanted to do it, but I, there's no way to do it. Understandable. Yeah, there's a lot going on. No problem. Um, how about you, Yvonne? Are you um, able to attend? No. Okay. Um, and Hala, are you able to attend tomorrow? And welcome. Can you hear us? I can. Okay. Oh, and we see you too. <laughs> 
Um, I'm just checking in to see who can attend the listening session with the POKU students tomorrow at 345. I'm just seeing if uh, I'm working on getting coverage at work. So okay. it's 50 50. All right, no problem. You can just come if you can and um, and I will, I'll send out the location. Um, I think I've already sent it via text. Um, and then the second listening session is happening at the Amherst Survival Center. That's on Thursday from 12.30 to 1.30. Um, and that is with the Survival Center community. Um, it will be happening during their community lunch period and uh, we'll have an opportunity to uh, share some information with the community as well as to be in listening mode. Um, so, um, you know, just to move us through here, I'm not going to, I'll, I'll, you can respond via text if you plan to be at that um, session. And then the third session is last week, uh, it was requested that I reach out to Ms. Pat, who is the chair of the Business Association of Amherst. Um, and they have invited us to join them for a listening session on May 21st from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, and I will send out details. But one of the things that I was hoping to get um, a read on from the group here is whether folks, um, given that these aren't public, they're not going to be on uh, Zoom, um, they're really just for these particular communities, how we want to um, sort of record, and I think that most importantly, we need to check with each of the groups when we get there to see how they would like for us to record whatever they might share with us. Um, but I just want that to be in the back of our mind to think about how we want to record um, the, the listening portions. Like in our previous sessions, they, they're available um, by video to the public. Um, so if anyone has any thoughts on that, otherwise we can move move on for right now. All right. So um, I'm going to call a period of public comment. This will be our first period of public comment. And then um, we're going to move into the rest of the agenda. So if you would like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. Um, and I will read this quickly. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, if you'd like, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during uh, the period, but we will be listening carefully. Um, so if you would like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, so not seeing any, um, I'm going to move quickly into uh, the one of the items on our agenda today. Um, it's listed as Amherst Town Democratic Committee Resolution in Support of Reparations. Um, the Executive Committee of the Amherst Town Democratic Committee um, has written a draft resolution in support of state and federal reparations. I met with Nick Brommel and Diana Stein, both members of that committee last week, and I sent out to you all their draft resolution. Did anyone have a chance to take a look at, uh, at that yet today? It was just a couple hours ago that I sent it, so no worries if, okay. So we have um, Nick and Diana here, and I'm going to bring them in. We are going to, um, and Diana and Nick, I'm going to apologize in advance. Given our timeline today, I'm going to ask that we move through this pretty quickly here. Um, and what we can do is I know Dr. Shabazz wanted to provide feedback on this. He is not here yet. Others may want to as well. And then um, we can get that to you in writing. But I do want to welcome you and uh, really thank you for your work on this um, and, and thank you for being here. Can, can you hear us? You can just, oh, yes. there's Nick. <laughs> Hi. Well, I'm in and is Nick in? 
Yes, Nick is here too. <laughs> right. Welcome to both of you. It was uh, really lovely to meet with you last week and great to see the resolution come through. Um, I want to turn it over to you quickly if you wanted to say yeah. anything. Um, I'd like to limit us to about five minutes here. I, I apologize, um, but I will promise to provide any feedback um, in writing to you all um, in the next couple of days. But um, I'll turn it over to you, Diana and Nick. Sure. Um, I'll start and Nick can interrupt me at any point. Um, the resolution draws very heavily on the language um, from, from something you wrote and also from the bill that is uh, uh, Senate 1053. Um, I don't claim that it's original, but what we tried to do was to give sort of a timeline and lead up to the fact that we would like to have a uh, legislation move forward that would support what we're recommending, which is reparations. Um, and I, I think that's really it. It's, it's rather short, um, but I hope it'll uh, uh, do the message in a way that people will take the time to read it. So there it is. Um, you, you have it now shared on your screen, I think. Yes. And um, so that's that's all I have to say. I'll, uh, I'll add one quick word. Thank you, Diana. Just uh, to uh, explain or perhaps refresh your memories of, about the process that we're in here. But right. but first and foremost, I just want to thank you all uh, in the assembly for you know your leadership in Amherst on this issue. And um, you know, we we feel that uh, the Massachusetts State Democratic Party should be a leader in the National Democratic Party because we are a liberal left state, and we think that Amherst is even more left and liberal. And so we we should be leading the state party, and the state party should be leading the national party in the direction we want to go in, which is you know more progressive, further left than it is. So this is one one uh, element in, in an, among a number of other ones. And every two years, the state party has an issues convention. They invite people from all over the state, commit Democratic committees from all over the state, to petition to have resolutions adopted. And then those resolutions sometimes, often, will work their way into the state party platform and then become embedded as part of the state Democratic Party platform. So we want to get reparations as part of the state Democratic Party platform. And that's what this is all about. And we had to pull it together rather quickly. So we'd really appreciate any feedback that you can give us with the caveat that we really are already behind. And there's not much, you know, we can't really just go back to the drawing board on it. So I'll stop there. Yeah, that's a good summary. Yeah, that's excellent. And just quickly, Nick and Diana, when do you need, um, so uh, I should announce that Diana um, has sent an invite to the assembly um, on at, at the Jones Library. And this was on, I'm sorry, I thought I wrote it down. Well, I, I want to interrupt because what I originally sent you was last year's info. So the only thing I know for sure is that there will be a caucus of uh, the Democratic people on uh, June 10th. And at, at presumably from 11 to 12, according to the what I learned at the library. Um, and we don't know yet which, we don't know yet the location for sure. But everyone is invited. If you're a Democrat, you can vote. If you would like to join the party at that time, then you can vote. So um, it, it would help to have you to support this resolution. We'd be really happy to, um, to include you in the Democratic Town Committee. Thank you very much, Diana. So when, when we have more details about the location, I'll send it out. And then, so right. ideally, um, are you still meeting on the 18th as planned? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So what we'll do is make sure to get you any feedback that we have um, by prior to then. So I'll, I'll shoot first the 17th on Wednesday. That would be uh, great. That would be awesome. fabulous. Sure. And if there are any questions from the assembly, please. Uh, uh, yes. Dr. Shpa, or Dr. Rhodes. Yep, please. Diane is dying. Hi there. Great to see you, Diane. And the same <laughs> here. <laughs> We've been on things together. Yes, we have. <laughs> things you were both on the charter commission is that true yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> um wonderful okay well if there aren't any other questions for diana and nick i'm gonna um of course feel free to stay i'm gonna return you to the to the audience um but otherwise we'll get you some um feedback in the next couple days that would be great thank you very much Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank Have a you. wonderful afternoon. Bye. All right. Let me just take a second here. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Um, another just quick announcement I wanted to share. The Amherst Cultural Council voted unanimously to extend our amended um, grant application. Um, they actually said that we could use the funds for either of the two options that we discussed. Um, one of them was to transcribe uh, some of our um, our meetings. And then the other one was to meet with the group that Pamela had suggested we meet with who does uh, document document through storytelling and, um, and, and to meet with them and see how they might be able to work with us um, to document our work here as an assembly. So I'm planting that seed right now. And then at our next meeting, um, given our timeline, uh, we will make a decision one way or another about how we'd like to move forward with that. Uh, all right, great. So... On the agenda, um, you'll see that based on our conversation last week, uh, we identified three um, deliberations essentially that we need to have um, that may include or, or, or probably will include motions and voting. Um, those items, I'm just gonna share um, for folks share my screen here and, and share the agenda. Um, so the first is ongoing funding streams. Um, and these are all directly from our charge. So we have a $2 million commitment um, from the town of Amherst that's based on the cannabis tax revenue that is received annually. Um, and we discussed last week that this um, number is declining. Um, so it's been sort of steady around 200,000. And so we've now had two um, transfers from certified free cash in that range. Uh, but the concern is if the cannabis tax revenue declines, it will take us a lot longer to get to that $2 million mark. So one of the recommendations that we are charged with making is to identify ongoing funding streams. Um, and my suggestion is that we expand beyond that to also make a recommendation on um, how to deal with the declining uh, cannabis tax revenue. The second is um, for us to deliberate on an allocation plan that includes eligibility criteria. Um, and the third is um, to deliberate on additional means of repair, uh, truth and reconciliation. Um, so we're given, we don't have uh, Dr. Shabazz and we do not have Alexis today. I think that I'm introducing these three deliberative topics that we need to get to um, for us to begin thinking about. And uh, we'll need to at our next meeting. And, I, and in the meantime, Ms. Bridges and others who maybe have missed a meeting, I can sort of fill in some of the missing pieces. Um, so what I would like to do with the time that we have here is to share with you um, the information that we received uh, today, actually, from Curry and Ellen at the Donahue Institute. They have provided all of the um, 
the qualitative and quantitative data to us from the survey, which closed about a week ago. Um, and so we have some decisions that we need to make uh, based on that. So let me just stop my share here. I'm just checking in to see if Dr. Shabazz is, if you if you all think to check in on the attendees every now and, and then to in case he comes in that way and just let me know um, if you see anyone, if you see Dr. Shabazz in particular. <laughs> um, so let me go ahead and pull this information up. Are there any questions while I'm doing this about the three deliberation topics that are um, that we've been charged with in terms of um, in terms of how we're moving forward with the process of, of, of deliberating on those? Dr. Rhodes, did okay, all right. All right, let me just pull this up here. And I'm going to share uh, what Perry has asked. So she says, attached are the tables for the AHRA survey in an Excel file. Each tab corresponds to a question or group of related questions. We include the frequencies and shares of responses. Um, and then she says, I made a note when a question or questions was only visible to a subgroup of survey respondents. Um, this explains why the totals change from question to question. Um, and then the next step here is to dive deeper, um, for them to dive deeper in their analysis by looking at the responses by characteristics. For example, support for reparations by, say, race or age. Um, and she says, we're happy to do the subgroup analysis based on feedback from the AHRA. We will also make visualization charts and figures for the HRA depending on what you'd like to highlight. So what we're what we're tasked with doing is um, thinking about any subgroups we would like to have analyzed, as well as um, which visualizations um, we would like for them to include in their final report. So I'm going to pull this up. With that said, and we can just review this. Everyone see my screen? Right. All right, excellent. And I will um, send this over to everybody, um, particularly to Pamela and Jennifer to include um, how we, however this might be included in the packet. Although, you know, this is data that uh, we're going to be synthesizing with Mattia Kramer in our final report. So depending on how we um, how we decide to go about that. So I'm going to start here. And we'll move through these just so you can get a sense of what how how these look and 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 what the um, what the data reported. There we go. Um, so uh, this was a question about, uh, do you currently live in Amherst? And so uh, most people, 88% live in Amherst and Amherst is their primary residence. Um, and then we also had some part-timers um, as well. Um, the question about if you've ever lived in Amherst, also 70% um, 70, 70 here. Um, and if you've lived here part-time, um, about 30%. Uh, so here we see the amount of respondents that identified as Black. So we ended up with a total of 99 respondents who identified as Black. Um, and we talked a little bit about this last week. I think this is 18.4% um, of the total, um, which does exceed the uh, black population in Amherst. Um, this was a number that we really worked hard to, we tried to reach as many folks as we could through a variety of channels. Um, and this is what the the outcome, I think that the Dunahue Institute felt in terms of survey, in terms of how surveys go, that this was a good, uh, that this was, this was respectable. Um, and then we have here, um, do you identify as a descendant of people enslaved in the U.S.? And 78.4 responded that yes, they did. 
Um, 21.6 said no. And then uh, coming over here, um, this is an interesting figure to look at. So 61.8% um, of the respondents said they supported the town's decision to establish a dedicated reparations fund. 20% uh, did not. And interestingly, 18.1% said they did not know or did not have enough information to make a decision on that. Anybody feel free to stop me at any time. I'm, I am moving through these quickly so we can have an open discussion. Um, and okay, so this was the question that if you've ever personally experienced discrimination or been treated unfairly because of your race or ethnicity, 30% um, said regularly, uh, 40, close to 49% said yes from time to time. Um, and then you can see the rest, no, 19.3 and 2.3 preferred not to say. This is the question about the systems. Um, and this question went only to um, respondents who identified as black. Um, and you can look at, uh, this is really interesting actually to look at um, and see where folks felt you know, major or minor changes were needed, and in some cases where there wasn't much change needed. Michelle, yes. In terms of that, the it's the ninety nine uh, people identified as black. Yeah. There, was there a further breakdown in relationship to how many of that not those ninety nine were residents of Amherst full time, etc.? Yes, and that is exactly what. Um, Kerry would like us to decide which subgroups to pull out. So that's that's a perfect example where we might look at um, at something like that. And that's what we really have to be able to provide. And I was hoping, Dr. Rhodes, I know that given everything that's going on in the community right now and your role on the, um, the school committee, it's a very busy time, but I was hoping that we could get together and provide that feedback um, by the end of the week to Kerry and Erin um, in terms of what subgroups we want them to look at. We, we can we can set a time off, offline uh, to set up a, sure. a time to do that because you know, yeah, you're right, my time is pressed, but yeah, we can we can do that. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Um, and um, the peoplehood question, um, this, I, I, again, very interesting. Have you ever personally experienced harms associated with peoplehood? If you remember, we did provide some idea of, of, about what peoplehood means. Um, and so 56.4% said yes here, 32.7 no. And I'm not surprised on the 10.9, the um, you know, maybe don't know, they maybe you know, that was, I thought this was an interesting question to include. Um, okay. And then, sorry, something's happening with my. So I think this is our eligibility. Um, sorry, I, I'm something seems to be cut off on my. Um, so eligibility descendants of enslaved individuals in the United States here, um, 30, 32 or 43.2% uh, said yes, 45.9 said no, um, and 10.8 said don't know. And would someone mind just checking um, the attendees for Dr. Shabazz? Because I, I unfortunately can't see when I'm sharing my screen. He is in there. Oh, yeah, he's in there. I didn't <laughs> At see least him. he's watching. Um, let me stop this so that I can bring him in. And there we go. All right. Um, I'll, we'll apologize to Dr. Shabazz. Hi, Dr. Shabazz, welcome. He may not be in a position to um, speak right now, but um, we'll, we'll wait for him to uh, get settled here and we'll continue. All right. Um, 
So this was a question that was for folks who do, who did not identify as Black um, that uh, asked whether they've ever experienced or, excuse me, whether they've witnessed anti-Black discrimination towards someone because of their race or ethnicity. 43.4 um, of the respondents said yes, and 56.6% said no. Um, and again, you know, all of this is, is tells a story really very interesting when you, you know, once we sort of process and digest this information a little bit more. Um, and like I said, you'll all have this as soon as we um, finish with the meeting. So you can take some time on your own to digest it. I will also send you a PDF uh, with all of the narrative responses. Um, all right. Um, so this is the response regarding the truth and reconciliation. Um, so the highest percentage here, the highest percentages were around creation of home ownership and real estate investment opportunities, um, a system-wide concrete support for Black students and teachers, also rated very high, the creation of a permanent historic cultural site for preservation and actualization, um, let's see here, uh, a program to teach black legacy. So they all, uh, were pretty high here. Um, and then, um, so this was the types of repair, um, and everybody who responded regardless of identity, answered these questions. And so this is an example where it it's possible we may want to look at how uh, respondents who identified as Black answered these questions versus uh, respondents who did not. And that's a subgroup that the Dunahue Institute could ana analyze for us based on the demographic uh, questions. They could uh, pull that information. Uh, so that was... This is, uh, again, really interesting. And then um, here we have the questions about, um, you know, how long has your family lived in Amherst? How long have you lived in Amherst? Um, what best describes your housing situation? Um, whether, uh, so here we had 7.1% um, of those who responded were college students. Um, your race and ethnicity, age. Can you go back to the race and ethnicity? You got it, yeah. So the person, is that black or African-American percentage the same as the people who identified as black? There was, I think, a little different differentiation all along, um, and Carrie and I had some discussions about that, but I think it ends it up being, um, so yeah, like we said, so there were 99 who identified, who responded and identified as Black, right. and then we have 71 um, here, so, you know. That's a big discrepancy. Yeah, that's it. That's it's interesting. 20, it's 20, 28 people, right? Yeah. So there's some something to dig into there, um, for sure. And Carrie and I have already put that on our radar to 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 look at. It reflects also in some of the questions where they ask about whether you've dis experienced discrimination because of your race. There seemed to be a discrepancy with the numbers on that one. Um, as well. I'm just, I'm just saying that I know I noticed like things fluctuating Absolutely. as you scroll as you scroll through. Yeah, I'm gonna write that one down too. Um Miss Bridges, were you about to say something? I'm sorry. Oh that's are you gonna send these to us so Is I can take a better look at these numbers? Absolutely. As soon as we finish our meeting, I will send you this and the narrative um, date. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. We Thanks need digestion oh. time. <laughs> yes. The, the, the highest percentage of people are between the ages of 65 and 74. It's almost 24% of the respondents. 
Yeah. And um, Carrie actually said that uh, that is very typical for survey. Okay. I was surprised by that too. And, and she said that, that, that was typical, okay. um, which again, really, you know, these listening sessions that we're holding over the next few weeks um, with these various groups like POKU and others, it's, it's so important because this is only really one method of um, consulting with the community and you can see where the limitations are. Um, yes, Ms. Bridges. Um ages 45 to 54 and 65 to uh what do i mean the 75 and older and the 50 45 to 54 are pretty dead long close i was surprised at that <laughs> but in my group yeah that's the highest <laughs> and, and, and combining those two groups it means that's 40 percent of your um respondents yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was concerned about my survey because it was sent to me twice and I put it in twice. So I'm very concerned. I hope it went in. Yeah, um, you could, we could, um, if you remember, if you, did you add any narrative data? Because Perry could probably, if you typed in any answers and, and didn't just answer the question, she could probably make sure for you. Um, okay. I just wanted yeah. to make sure there was a couple of people that had called me and said the same thing with them. It was sent to them twice and they put it in twice. So okay. that could mess up some numbers. Yeah. And twice. Yeah. One of the things that Carrie said is there was going to be, yeah, like people who didn't complete it people where it may have been duplicated. So I don't know. I think this is already taken into account things like that, but it's a good. good question to ask. Yeah. Always things like that happen. Absolutely. Sure. Always. Yeah. Okay. All righty. There was another, there were questions about the uh what i thought the answer to the question about whether um a successor group did anyone see that as i was going through here okay let me see what's let me see if i can find it um here we go all right let me no that's not let me stop the share real quick and just see if i can look at it um Uh, here we, okay. No, it wasn't. Hmm. I knew I saw it. It was a lower number than I had hoped, um, responded yes to that. And so I wanted to share that, but for some reason I'm not seeing it now. I'll I'll try to find it. I don't want to um, hold us up here. Uh, so so yes, I'm gonna, Dr. Shabazz, welcome. Good to see you. Um, so I'm gonna get that this information off to you. What would be wonderful is if you can take some time um, to read through it note any questions that you have and just send them directly to me and uh, Pamela and uh, Jennifer. And then uh, Dr. Rhodes and I are going to meet prior to meeting again with the Donahue Institute. We really, um, what I want to open the discussion to now is what subgroups, as Carrie referred to, we may want to pull out um, to look at. So for example, with the types of repair, do we want to know the differences in terms of if you if the folks who identified as black, um, what types of repair they want to see versus the people who did not identify as black? That's an example, um, and there are of course other examples. So I'm going to open it up now. Um, the other question was which visualizations we would like to see in their final analysis. So. Um, we're going to have all of this data, but they can visualize um, the pieces that we feel are most 
you know, most important to have visualized. So the floor is open for comments, questions. And again, this might be something we need a little time to sit with before we can do that, which is totally understandable. And just kind of looking ahead. So right now we are scheduled to meet next week on the 22nd. We can't meet on Monday the 29th because it's Memorial Day. So I was hoping that we could schedule another meeting that week. I think missing a week right now could really impact us um, given our timeline here. So I will send out a doodle for that or ask Jennifer to send something out for that so that we can organize um, another meeting for that week. So let me um, just take a quick peek here. Dr. Shabazz, before you came, we reviewed uh, the three items on the agenda that come from um, our charge that we've identified as discussions or deliberations that we need to have, um, including the ongoing funding streams, the allocation plan, including eligib eligibility, and then the um, means of repair uh, and truth and reconciliation. So we've planted that seed today and uh, we'll take um, one or two of those up at our meeting next week. Great. Very good. Um, I would say relative to the survey, it, it, uh, and to make things simple, you don't have to compare it to the non, uh, because we have all of what you've just done from the overall average of which the 15 percent or whatever of, uh, of African Americans are in. So what we just need is the breakout of what those who identify as African American black um, registered on all of the all of the same things, and then we can we can make the the comparisons if we want to what the general result of the survey was versus uh, African Americans in particular. That's what my recommendation would be. Okay, just to um, say back what I think I'm hearing. Um, you're saying that for the questions where, um, regardless of identity, all folks uh, responded to the question, we should just simply break out um, the uh, folks who identified as Black from those questions. Is that, did I hear that? Okay. And then we decide. Okay. All right. And again, Dr. Rhodes and I will kind of put together a roadmap for that, um, that we, based on this discussion and any other input that we get. get. Um, I don't know if you all have thoughts right now on the visual piece, but again, you can just send those along once you've had a chance to really take a look at this. Um, we'll also want to speak with Mattia um, about um, the narrative responses and how we would like those. Those are very, very interesting. Um, and I think we'll want to include those in our report as well. Um, and all right, so kind of along that line, the listening sessions that we have with POKU, the Survival Center, and the Black Business Association of Amherst. Um, by the way, I'm also meeting with the director of the BID and the director of the chamber this week um, to talk to both of them about, uh, again, our charge um, does um, elicit some uh, engagement from those groups. And so I, I, based on our discussion last week, um, have reached out to them as well. But for these three listening sessions, I would like to know, um, again, based on what we hear from the groups themselves and how they would like their responses to be recorded, given this will not be videoed, this will not be you know, we won't be a public meeting. How do you all think would be the best way, um, like seeking permission to do an audio recording, for example, at the beginning um, might be something, and then um, asking them how they would like their responses to be incorporated in our uh, recommendations. So the floor is open for that. 
question. And Dr. Shabazz, do you are you do you know if you're able to make it tomorrow to the Poku listening session at the high school at 345? I'm gonna try. Okay. Okay. And then the survival center is at 1230 on Thursday. So we're just we're gonna do our best here, but I do want to make sure that we can audio record these if we have permission so that um, members who were not able to attend will be able to. Um, listen, as well as for Mattia to be able to um, have any pertinent information that we would want to include in our um, recommendations. Yes, Ms. Bridges. I think the, as far as the Black business, um, that definitely should be recorded. Okay. Every word they say, I think that should be recorded. Um, asking permission of course but i think it should be recorded yeah yeah my plan would be to um ask each of these groups for permission um right in the beginning to record the audio um and then to further define how the groups would feel comfortable having the information um reported on in our recommendations um if at all, uh, you know, listening has been interesting. It's interesting because it's sort of our job to, to try to really take in all of this information and then, um, you know, synthesize it into recommendations. Um, and so, you know, I think if we can get audios, that's gonna be really helpful for us to be able to do that. Any other? Suggestion. Yeah, I was I was going to say it, it for all three, it mm, would yeah. be more helpful for us if it's recorded and anything we have to recommend or whatever, we can go back. Exactly. Um, because it's always hard if you're like, well, what did that one say? Or what did that? I mean, it's it's I think it's better for us if we have this. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes when you're listening, you really want to be present, but you're not, you know, necessarily digesting every piece of information. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. By, right. by the way, uh, so yeah. I, I uh, had um, at one point um, agreed to uh, show up at the, uh, uh, the Amher Black Amherst Business Association uh, and that meeting, I will be there. It, you know, it's, it's on another matter, but it was something that I had postponed before. And they said, well, come the next time. And this is the next time. Oh, good. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, if other people on this committee are going to show up, we need to make sure that we do not have a quorum of folks there. I think actually, Irv, that's a great point. But I think we're okay to be there, and I will verify this with our town clerk, with our clerk of the council. I think we're okay to be there as long as we are in listening mode and we are not making any uh, decisions. We're not discussing any matters. We're really just there to hold space and listen. So, uh, but I will verify that because. Quite honestly, I think for these groups, um, I mean, I think that coming tomorrow to to meet with the POKU group is going to be, I mean, given everything, um, you know, that's happening in our community and how um, active these students seem to be, I think it's going to be a really big learning opportunity for us. And so as many of us who can be there as possible, um, and if anybody feels like they can't be there in person, but would like to try to zoom in, we might be able to make that work. Um, if you just give me a heads up, um, like Yvonne, if you're out of town and you wanted to, but again, we will try to get the audios, um, so that we can listen. So I know that folks need to leave at three o'clock and I wanna honor your time. Um, I want to call a second, our second period of public comment um, and ask, um, please folks, if you'd like to make public comment, go ahead and use the raise hand function. I'm not gonna read the statement again because I think everyone that was here um, when I read it last time is, is still here. 
Um, so I am going to move Kiara in first. Joe, I think I have to leave early. Okay, Yvonne. Sorry. No, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry. I'll be here next week. Okay, we'll see you then. Thank you. Welcome, Kiara. Good afternoon. There you are. <laughs> yeah, I just had a couple of couple comments slash questions. Um, I was I re really appreciated you know seeing all the the data breakdown. That's you know that's really helpful to see. Um, and I want to Pleasures. to advise or ask that you would um, retrieve. Hold on, baby. <laughs> you would retrieve the um, the data for the forms of reparations uh, from Black Americans or those who identified as descendants of um, enslaved people, um, as well as um, the length of family residence. I think that might be um, a useful data point in terms of identifying some of the historic historical factors around the Black population in Amherst. Uh, that might be really helpful to your process. Um, I also want to know um, if or when that data will be made public, like as a report or anything like that. Um, and then also, I would like to know just for the sake of public information, um, has the town of Amherst or the AHRA um, contracted with First Repair as a consultant for this process or um, is that the intention? And what is the, the process for set that sort of thing? Would it be like a vote that you all take? Is that something that you just that you will decide on the back the back end and then you know that's just that's just do, do it all the background or what's the process for that i'm just really curious about that and that's that's all my, my public comment thank you thank you kiara and i'm going to try to just quickly answer just a couple of your questions here um in terms of the data, um, I am not sure whether the raw data will be available as part of the public packet necessarily, but it will be included in our final report, which is due um, to the town council uh, at the end of June. Um, and then in terms of uh, first repair, I assume that you're talking about uh, former Alderwoman Robin or Simmons organization first repair. Am I right in that? That's okay. right. Okay. <laughs> Um, we've had no discussions um, that I am aware of uh, regarding um, contracting with First Repair either now or in the future. Um, now that may, I don't, I have no se sense around that. I don't know if anyone else wants to put put any any information forward about that, but um, there have not been any discussions of that of that kind. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Kiara. And I'm going to move you back and then I'm going to bring uh, Lauren in. All right. All right. Oh, sorry, Lauren. Just one second. I think you're coming over. Hmm. Oh, there you are. Welcome, Lauren. Hi. Sorry, it takes so long for me to come over. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I wanted to just say some brief comments. Um, one, I'm glad I'm not the only one who noticed the um ability to duplicate the survey i wasn't sure if if i should share that or what time to share that but um i just was curious if you could take the survey more than once so i myself took the survey twice um and so i don't know how that would affect the the numbers but the amount of people who actually took the survey was surprising to me. And so I just that kind of piqued my curiosity of if you if you are able to take the survey more than once and can. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is um for the band of family, is it possible to 
Lauren? I'm sorry, Lauren. I'm going to stop you because I we I at least can't can't hear you at all, and I want to make sure you can be heard. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Yes, that's great. That's better. Yep. I tried the video thing, but okay. <laughs> um, the other thing I just the other thing I was asking. Um, um, assembly could be posted on the community me, um, community meetings on the town website because I was not able to get the link. I think there was a meeting this weekend um, or last weekend, and I just want to know if that was a possibility. And um, also, I, I guess from your discussions um, with recording listening sessions that are more for you know private groups um i would just suggest that with certain groups there are ways to record but not necessarily have their personal thoughts recorded like they could be written down or i just think it, it should be a possibility to share personal thoughts without audio recordings because i think again you have to take into account that some people might not be comfortable with recording their personal opinions and thoughts thank you thank you so much lauren um and i want to try to answer a couple of your questions um dr shabazz or hala um, Lauren is suggesting, I believe, that the BAM meetings be posted maybe on our Engage Amherst page or on the town uh, through the town's community calendar. And I think that's been suggested previously. Um, and I'm not sure if Jennifer was able to do that for the last one. Is there an upcoming meeting this Saturday or was it last Saturday? There is one on this Saturday and I can post it on the community um, thing. Perfect. Okay, that would be really great. Thank you, Hala. That would be excellent. And so this Saturday's meeting, just since Lauren is here, what, what time is that meeting? 1.30. Okay, perfect. Well, we're going to be sending out a link. We were just trying to wait on the 1994 report to send as well as something else, which I haven't gotten. So I might just have to send out the link without the necessary readings that we wanted to read ahead of time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it happens. <laughs> Sorry, school is getting out, so it's loud over here. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay, and then the other question. Okay, Lauren, I'm going to um, move you back. Thank you so much for your comments. And I am just, um, I think that Ms. Bridges has to leave if she hasn't already. Um, and so I, I do just want to quickly for the folks who are still here, um, revisit this question about recording of these listening sessions. Um, and this might be something uh, that I would maybe, I'm not sure who else to sort of check in with about this, but I wanna make sure we, um, we do these listening sessions with integrity and with respect to the people that are giving us, you know, the privilege of hearing what their experiences are. Um, so if you don't have right now anything, that's fine, but uh, please just follow up with me before tomorrow's listening session. And I would definitely advocate not to record the youth because they are protected status in my mind differently. We could share what they want to share, but in terms of voice recognition, and I just feel very protective of the youth. That's just my gut right away response. Yeah, that resonates with me too. And and maybe we, you know, in some ways, I think consistency um, is the best formula because um, sometimes it's important to make different decisions for different people and groups, but. I find that if we're consistent and we have a good reason that it comes with integrity, that we can apply that everywhere. And um, so my preference, my preference would be actually to have somebody there like Mattia 
um, to just transcribe uh, the without an audio recording. Um, and then, of course, to work with the groups to make sure that we are clear on what they would like to have shared or not shared um, in the report. So if that if if that feels OK to the group, then maybe we'll just go ahead forward with that process. Any objection to that? OK. All right. Wonderful. Um, so. Uh, we'll be meeting next week on the 22nd. I'll be sending a doodle poll out for the week of the 29th since we can't meet on Memorial Day. Um, and Dr. Rhodes and I will be meeting about the survey. We'll take your feedback and provide that to the Dunahue Institute. And I think it's important that we are prepared next week to deliberate on ongoing funding streams, again, to include uh, any additional funding streams, as well as any recommendations we want to make about the uh, cannabis tax revenue uh, potential changes there. Um, and then possibly to deliberate then on the additional means of repair, truth and reconciliation. I think that the allocation plan um, and eligibility criteria is going to take us um, a full, a, a really a full session um, on its own. And so I'd like to sort of get us into a, a framework to be ready for that um, and to all be, be there on, uh, as best we can. So are there any other questions or comments right now or, or announcements or... All right. I know there's some upcoming, um, there are some upcoming like Brace Amity Day, Juneteenth will be approaching. There are some upcoming um, announcements that uh, next week when Jennifer is back, I'm sure she'll be able to make. Um, so I wish you all a wonderful week. And with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 3.06 p.m. Thank you so much.